So when is it time to leave? My story. Seriously. What's up everybody, it's Alex Sigrist and today, you all might be a little shocked. I'm an American expat living in Korea for the last 12 years. That's basically my entire online persona, in fact, mostly because I deleted the stupid things I posted in college on Twitter. Seriously, check it out. It's like empty now. And most of you, including my friends here in Korea, don't know me as Alex, the American living in Ohio. You just know me as Alex, the American from Ohio, living in Seoul, South Korea. The thought of Alex going back to America probably hasn't crossed most people's minds in the last, I don't know, three to four years. I was becoming what we in the business call a lifer, the expat who just doesn't go home. And yes, I can now say definitively that I'm an expat, not an immigrant, because I do intend to go back home. Today is the first in a series called Expat Confessions, where I'm going to get a little personal, a little honest with you about the serious issues you have to deal with while being an expat, living outside of your home country. And today, it's all about the idea of when is it time to go back home? And that's a tough one I've been kind of dealing with lately. How did I decide this? What's my timeline? What could keep me in Korea longer? And well, what's the best and stupidest advice that I've found online? Plus my own advice. Actually, the advice stuff will come in part two whenever I finish editing it. So, how did I decide to leave the traveling life? Breaking it down into two parts, the how and the why. First, you have to know a little bit about me and how I make decisions. I probably make the most rational decisions of people who make impulsive decisions. My whole life is basically that shower eureka moment. You've had thoughts in the back of your mind for a while, but you're not necessarily always thinking about it, and then all of a sudden, bam, it's clear. You know what to do. And that's how I came to this decision. I don't even know why I wanted to go home at that very moment. I just knew at some point I was gonna go back to America. There are plenty of whys that must have played into that decision in the back of my head or consciously. So number one, people get older without you. Thinking about parents getting older sucks, but there's going to be a day when I can't go hiking or camping with my mom anymore. And that day hopefully won't be here for a long time. But at some point in our lives, it will happen. Don't forget that. And that goes for parents, brothers, sisters, friends, your friends' kids. People grow old and we miss that cool part of the process of life. Number two. It's hard to have those close friendships here. It's not impossible, but it is hard. Now, why do I say that? I do have maybe three or four people I consider myself pretty close to in Korea, like really close. It sounds like a lot, right? I mean, it is, but not if you know my background. See, I grew up with around, I don't know, 20 plus cousins on both my mom's and dad's sides. We grew up loving Ninja Turtles, Diet Cokes, hiding go seek tag in the dark, tackle football outside. We grew up and had nearly 20 plus years of life experiences together. And it takes just that long to get close to someone else. I mean, I don't even know if you can. I mean, we grew up together. We experienced those awkward moments growing up around girls, embarrassing moments around alcohol. It's hard to replace 20 people who would help me with anything I need, stop what they're doing and help me move a couch upstairs on a random Tuesday evening. It's not impossible to replace that, but it is hard, especially in a big city. Number three, I'm missing moments at home. Those moments. You know, every second you actively choose to stay in your adventure, your expat life, you're actively choosing to miss chances to build memories with your close friends and family back at home. I want to stress that it's not necessarily the wrong choice. I don't regret what I've done here in Korea. There are things you have to miss out on in life to experience other things. You can't do it all. I missed all of my cousin's weddings, sorry. I got to see 
things that they won't ever see. A sunset in Jeju. I got to surf in Yangyang with the owner of a bar, cafe, surf shop out there. I got to go to school and get my master's degree in Korea. I've done so much, I don't regret it, but there is a cost to these amazing things. And, and that is not making memories of those moments with the people you're not with. See, Zoom calls with the family aren't the same as making your cousin crash his bike and spill a slushy on himself because you were riding in front of him and cut him off because there was a really cute girl that distracted you. But did you notice a common thing, a theme here? It's family. Everything so far, all this has been about family. Family is getting older. Family is my closest group of friends. And I wanna make those family moments. Look, we're not bad people for choosing to live away from family. We are all birds that left the nest to build our own lives, and that's a great thing. And you're not a bad person for choosing to go back home too. We have but one life to live. Only we really know the right choice on the inside. Now there's a fourth reason that's not family, and, and that's big city life. It changes you. It makes you care more about what other people think about you. It, it makes you work harder and enjoy life less. It pushes you to be a better person at the expense of having a better life. Well, you have a worse life then. And no one really knows that, as well as people who grew up in a small city, and then you've moved to the big city. It's changed who I am. If you caught my last video, I said that even using Instagram was causing me to focus on ways to make sure I looked good online in front of other people. And, you know, obsessing what I'm posting. Should I post this? Do I need to post that? What should I write underneath this post? Instagram is one of the many ways, the many parts of my life where I feel like I'm losing that small town, nice, humble-ish kid who enjoys burgers and Diet Cokes with his family on the back porch. Again, if you're from a small town and you've ever lived in a big city, you probably get it. Now, don't get me wrong, Korea is a wonderful place and I can't wait to really enjoy the rest of my time here. In fact, that's the best part about knowing I want to leave. Oh, right, the timeline. When will I leave? Not now. I have some unfinished business here. I will leave at the earliest, maybe a year from now. At the latest, it could be three years later, and maybe two years from now, I, I, I don't know for sure. Could be longer, I, but this is great, really, knowing that my time in Korea here is limited. It means that I will make the most of these last few months, years, whatever it may be. I will finish my goal of traveling to every major city or region in Korea. I will force myself to cut back on jobs that I was using as stepping stones to get to the next part of my career. I'll be stepping down from a lot of my guest spots on radio. And yeah, it's fun, but it's kept me from traveling more and spending more time with my friends. I wanna enjoy Korea. I will make the most of fulfilling one of my childhood dreams being in a rock band. I mean, take a look at this like sneak peek of a next mu music video I'm gonna be in. It's kind of cool, right? I'm shy, I'm nervous, but I love it. I love it. It's literally been a dream of mine to do that in a music video, that little jumpy thingy, whatever that was. Oh, right, I did mention, I'd say, what will keep me in Korea longer than I expect. Uh, did I mention I'm in a band in Korea? I have another dream, and COVID kind of put it in the back seat for now, but I wanna play at a festival in Korea, like on a big stage, even if we're just the opening act and only our friends are there for it. I, I wanna move around on stage. I wanna play for people who maybe came just for the festival and they accidentally came early and, and, and there we were on stage. They didn't come to see us necessarily, but they're glad that they did catch our show. That's what I want. And if we start touring around Korea a bit more, I'll probably stay a little longer. Obviously, if we came like superstars, <laughs> I'd stay even longer, but I'm not really betting the house on that. Plus, I'm growing this hair out to, just to do that on stage. Anyway, that's about it for today's video. You might be saying, Alex, that's great. That's your story, but I'm different. How can I make that decision for myself? And what's the exact right time? Well, I don't know if there is an exact right time, but that'll be part two of this little mini series. New video about the questions we should ask ourselves when deciding when to leave. That's coming out soon. I hope today's video helped a little bit and gave you something to think about. 
and I'll see you next time. Goodbye. I'll see you. Seriously, like I just want to be on stage and just like do the guitar thing and then the uh, the hair and the I'm I'm emo never dies.